All right, so here we are in the worship center today, and I wanted to do a keyboard tutorial of some of the basic things I feel that I've picked up uh, for me personally transitioning from, um, you know, being a guitar player and really using learning music through the guitar um, to transitioning to keyboard. I just feel that there are a few almost guitar type strategies uh, that have simplified the keyboard playing side of things for me. And uh, I think it'll really be beneficial to pass these things along, especially for those uh, who are either just picking up the keyboard or for those keyboard players who are still con continuing to understand what we do in what we call um, Nashville notation. Uh, so anyhow, I, I do want to mention just before we get started with the keyboard stuff uh, that I created kind of a, a big chart. Um, that really connects and explains some of these things. Um, I scoured Google and couldn't find any resource that really explained all that I was hoping it, for it to explain all in one thing. So I went and made my own, and this result is, uh, is what you get. Uh, so there'll be a whole separate video that goes over um, just this chart and all the pieces, so be, be looking for that. Um, but for today, our focus is going to be just um, the keyboard, and uh, previously for acoustic guitar, what I, I already uh, made a video called The Six Chords. So it's just talking about how to take six uh, motions and movements and then, you know, transpose them um, to different songs that you're playing in when you're singing in a, uh, you know, singing in a different key. And for me leading worship, I want to keep things simple. I've got plenty of other things to think about. Um, so today we're going to be focusing on how I simplify um, what my left hand does. So this video is just about chords on the keyboard um, and really the strategy that I do for that. Um, so to sh demonstrate some of these chords, I'm going to pull up this um, is just the diagram of the keys. Um, being a guitar player, this was the first thing that intimidated me was like, whoa, just black and white stuff and how do I get my bearings? So anyhow, you got two black keys and then three black keys. And then these notes are listed out on each key. Uh, now something important to just notice and mention, this is just kind of the basic stuff, so if you're already familiar with this, that's awesome. Just hang tight for a minute. Um, this black key is F sharp, uh, and it's essentially a half step up from F. When you go from something like G to A, that's called a whole step. G to G sharp, that's a half step. And also, it's not labeled on this chart, but if you take A and you drop down to this black key, this black key could also be called A flat. So a half step up is a sharp, a half step down is a flat. So this key could technically have two names, and the same thing, there's um, you know spots on the guitar fretboard that could technically have two names. Um, anyhow, let's get started with just the chords themselves. I'm going to walk through... Um, the chords that I use dominantly are really just two notes at a time. Most basic chords are three notes, but I, I just want to show you something as, as we get into it. So I'm going to walk through the chords and let you see them. And uh, um, these are the, the things that I started off. This would be a great first step to memorize. So, um, And I'm going to link these things to Nashville Notation. So bear with me for a minute. I'm going to start talking in the numbers, but you'll hear me saying the numbers and you'll see the notes here. So the first chord is the one, and I just put, um, you know, a dot on each key. So to play that on my keyboard, it would sound like this. That's the one. The next chord that I'm going to show you is called the four. Oh, and all these chords are related to the key of G. So this is what I use for my G chord. But when we start transposing keys, it's easier to just call it the one. Um, so anyhow, this is the G, also known as the 1. The next chord I'm going to show you is the C, also known as the 4. And it sounds like this. Next chord after that is the 5, also known as the D. And this is the first black key that we're actually playing. Um, next is the 6. You'll notice that these numbers go out of sequence. We just went one, four, five, six. And uh, again, there's a reason for that. It, it, there might be a whole another video you know, to explain that when I go over 
um, what this chart means, that might be the best time to understand why that is. Um, but for now, just know that we're going through these numbers, one, four, five, six. And now I'm going to show you uh, technically a blended chord with the name 5 slash 7, so we call that the 5 over the 7. And then in the scale, that would return us to, most often I play this chord right before coming back to the 1. Now another, um, now we get to the 2 and the 1 over the 3. The 2. And the 1 over the 3 is almost just above it. So now I'm going to walk through just a couple movements just to show you some of the relationships of the chords. Here's the 1. Here's the 2. Here's the 1 over the 3. Sometimes I get lazy and just call this the 3, but... Um, so you could almost go... 1, 2... Whoop, I'm sorry, wrong click. 1... So those pairs of white keys moving up from the G. Um, now I just want to show you when I play through um, kind of a new set of chords, I tend to walk through the whole key of chords in this order. So now we're going to start moving through some of these things just a little more quickly uh, so you can see how they work. over the 7, 8, 2, 1 over the 3, 4. Whoa, we just did a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so if you feel feeling like we, we're moving pretty quick, um, we are, but essentially that's like one complete chord family. Um, I'm going to say 95% of the songs that you know and love on the radio can be played using this chord family and then you would just transpose to scoot the chords to the key that you're singing in. Um, now let me just talk about transpose real quick. We'll come back to these chords almost just as a practice thing to go through it. But um, So right now this is a picture of the MIDI controller that I'm using. Um, I use a MIDI controller into Reason, uh, but that's kind of a, another video for a whole separate day as to why I do that. But when you hit these two buttons together, you transpose the keyboard, which just means that, um, well, you're scooting all of the keys to a new place. So if you were to hit plus one, well, I don't even know if that's a good way to explain it. Um, transposing just means that this key would become an A, or this key could become a B, or this key would become a C. So anyhow, you would just scoot around um, the transposing until you fit the key that you're singing in. And again, this chart is what helps you with that. So essentially, the chords that I just showed you is this row right here. Um, actually, that's what I'll do next, is go back and give you the names of each chord as we're playing it. Um, but, you know, the numbers that were off to the side correspond to these numbers. The name of the chord is what's listed here. Uh, so if you wanted to transpose up to, say, you're playing G chords and you wanted to sing it in the key of B, you would come up to this row here, which I called Keyboard Transpose, and on that transposer, you would just go plus four. Uh, and then that would be, you know, you, all of a sudden, these chords are at this pitch for singing. So anyhow, I hope that makes uh, sense a little bit. You know, all of these things will go hand in hand. So it's a little hard to cover all of it inside of one video. Uh, but what I said I would do next is go through the chords and just give you the name with each one. So this would be what I use for the G chord. C, C chord. D, E minor. This would be um, D over F sharp, and then back to our G, and then up to the A minor, 
And this chord would be, let me go back and check because my brain is moving slow. That would be the G slash B, which we already said would be pronounced G over B. So this would be the G over B. Again, I do just want to mention real quick, the reason that I only use two notes at a time for these chords uh, is first of all, it's, e it's faster to learn and pick up. Second of all, um, it's actually better to have the lowest note in your chord be the root note. So as you get into chord inversions for piano and stuff, sometimes you add a lower note, like this G chord would be G, uh, B, and then they would also add with your pinky finger the D down here. What I find, and this is more from the studio recording and the mix perspective, is that if the lowest key in your chord is not the root note, it can create confusion sometimes with the bass guitar or whatever instrument is filling in a lower octave than you. So anyhow, the reason that I'm going through each of these chords with only two notes is that the lowest note in the chord, you know, the lower keys are to the left here, the higher keys are to the right. So the lowest note in each chord always stays the root of that chord. So anyhow, let's just, I'm going to walk through each of those chords again, and uh, that'll be pretty much the all that I wanted to cover with this video. Um, I'll add each of, you know, all of the colors in there together, even though it will seem a little bit overwhelming until you've watched this. Um, but this can just be a simple reminder for you of, you know, where each, uh, where each note is. So I'll make this a picture that you could save and print, um, and I'll add the numbers to it so that you can see how some of those things are related. But anyhow, I just want to walk through the chords again. And uh, here we go. One, four, five, six, five over the seven. And you want to be comfortable with all of these chords that you can walk through them in uh, any progression. Um, now you would see that, you know, this is how a song is built up. So anyhow, that's all I wanted to cover, and that's a little bit of, you know, walking through the chords. Uh, this video today is meant to go along with that other uh, chart that I showed you, so take a look for some of these things, and uh, thanks for watching.